Welcome back to Poland, everybody. We're in a city with a metro area of 1.25 million people that most people in America don't know about. They don't know how to say the name, and it just looks like an alphabet jumble on the map. So where are we? I'm gonna butcher the name. No, this you're is, not. This is I'm how it's spelled, it. but Julie will <laughs> say it. But this is how it's spelled right here. Go ahead. Wrocław. Rush. Rob. <laughs> so anyway, it's cute, and so it's uh, it's nicer than I thought it would be. So. Anyway, we're going to spend basically 24 hours here, so we're just looking to see what it's like, and um, so far, so good. Wrocław is located in the southwest corner of Poland, and it's a city that goes back to the 1200s. But I'm going to tell you, I'm ignorant about this city. I really didn't know much about it. Have you heard of it if you're from North America? If so... Leave a comment down below. So if you've been following Julie and I, you know that we're visiting Poland for 57 days and we're checking out a lot of cities and seeing what the livability is like because I might get residency in Poland and we're trying to decide where we might want to live. Wrocław has apparently almost everything. Good restaurants, a beautiful charming old town, good affordability. This is a college town with 130,000 students, almost 10% of the population, and it's got a really interesting history. Wroclaw had an underground anti-communist movement, and during the communist period, the activists would actually go and paint dwarfs on communist monuments and do dwarf graffiti. So in 2005, the mayor of the area decided to put out a statue of a dwarf. Well, things took off, and now there's over 600 of them. So we went around the town trying to see how many of these dwarfs we can locate. So here are two dozen of the dwarfs that we found. Now, you can get a guide that will help to map you to the different dwarfs around the city, but they're adding 20 to 30 different dwarfs per year. And a lot of these dwarfs are owned by the different companies and businesses nearby. So if one goes out of business, that dwarf might disappear. So just for the fun of it, you might want to just walk around the town and see how many you can find. We didn't work too hard to find these 24 and they're mostly down in the center of the town. I'm sure there's probably 10 times more within the vicinity that we didn't even see but they're each unique, each interesting, and they have a story to tell. It could be about protests, could be about solidarity, freedom, but they're also just beautiful to check out and look at. And the fun of the hunt is maybe what it's all about. So if you're going to Václav, you can't help but come here and see how many of these you can find and do your own photographic tally of each dwarf. Just keep your eyes open on benches, under benches, lamp posts, on window ledges, near the gutter, near a building, on the building. They're just everywhere. Almost as entertaining as these gnomes is the anti-Putin murals and paintings around there's also quite a few Ukrainian flags in the show of support for Ukraine. The town hall is something that you need to see to, and appreciate. It was developed over a period of about 250 years from the end of the 13th century to the middle of the 16th century. During the latter part of World War II, an aerial bomb pierced the roof, but fortunately did not explode. So it took some minor damage and it did lose some of its sculptures, unfortunately. But overall, it remained intact. Now, it's a beautiful building amongst many beautiful buildings. This was a Polish-German city for a very long time. Prior to World War II, it was German. Most of the Poles at that time had left Wrocław to the new Poland that was recreated in 1920. However, after World War II, the Soviet Union took a large portion of Polish land, which became parts of Belarus and Ukraine. The city of Lviv was taken away from the Poles, and Wroclaw 
was then given to the Poles. So many of the Poles that reside in Brasilov were descendants of the Lviv Poles. While the city is beautiful, 50% of the city was destroyed during World War II, but fortunately it was meticulously rebuilt, much as it once was. Well, after a day of touring around the city, we got hungry and we found a nice vegan vegetarian place. Okay, so we're at this vegan restaurant here in the heart of Old Town, Russia, and really good food, and it looks healthy. I got my mashed potatoes, falafel, some salad. Julie's got beetroot chops, some cabbage, and some potatoes. What what did this cost with our tea and lemonade? Also, uh, seventy-one. Seventy-one. Seventy-one PLN. Just like most Polish cities, there's a great transportation system built into the surrounding area. So even if you're not living near the old town, it's really easy to get to from the surrounding communities. Now we never had to use the public transportation, but it is there. We of course have our car that we drive around Europe and the hotel that we're staying at, the Joy Inn, has parking available for us there as well as a park nearby along the river and it's a simple walk probably about a five minute jaunt from the hotel going into the old town so we felt like we picked out a pretty good location if you follow us you know we normally go with an airbnb so the hotel was a little bit more than what we normally spend per night it was eighty dollars then it was 50 PLN for each dog and 50 for parking. So 150 total and extra fees on top of the $80 for the one night in Vratislav. Let's take you inside. Now we did sleep here, so the beds are not going to be made when you see the place. But this was about location. It had the necessities for what we needed. But just be forewarned, if you're here in the summer like we are, there's no air conditioning. You just have a fan and a window and the street can be kind of noisy. Now, if you're new to our channel, Julie and I were traveling the world with our two dogs. We're trying to see what it's like to live in other countries, other places, and we're trying to share our experiences and expenses with you. So please subscribe, give this video a like, and as a reminder, we do use international health insurance as we travel. If you'd like to know about the insurance we are using, email me at warrenjulietravel at gmail.com. I'll send you over the link so that you can check out international health medical plans. One thing we really enjoyed about our location was the pedestrian friendly streets nearby, cafes and places where we can go and just hang out and grab a cappuccino. We decided to go to a place that caught our eye the night before called Central Cafe for breakfast. Most breakfast places here don't open until 8 or 9. So I've got a large cappuccino, Julie got a regular cappuccino and I got the pleasure of great company. They had food out, looks like for lunchtime, salads, so you could probably come in here, get a quick bite, and most importantly for us, dog friendly. So we were able to bring Katie and Aria in here. I've got the nice large fruit pancakes, and Julie got a large omelet. Huge omelet for a little girl. And the total came in to a very comfortable 66.50 PLN. And if you've been watching our channel for a while, you know that I like to show you the menu so that if you wanted to order something different. So here are the costs in PLN. It's 4.74 PLN to the dollar right now, 4.72 to the euro, and 5.46 to the pound. We hope you enjoyed today's walk through Vratislav. Please stick around for a special bonus on a short that I did with Julie earlier this week. As a reminder, we're traveling the world with our two dogs, trying to see what it's like to live in different countries, sharing our experiences and expenses with you. So please subscribe and give this video a like, and please enjoy this extra bonus.